Welcome to Vintage Weights PGH. In this video, I'm going to give you a little historical background on the Eagle Heads, as well as go through the different specifications and details of this weight plate, and hopefully give you a good sense of the value of it. If you'd like to support the channel, please make sure to use the affiliate links in the description, as well as code VINTAGE when you're shopping for modern equipment, and it will save you some money and kick a couple pennies back my way. You can also shop on Amazon through my Amazon affiliate link for anything you want, and it's like leaving a tip at a restaurant after a good meal. Let's start out with just a general look at the weight plate. It doesn't have any spokes. It's got this center hub that is about an inch high with, I'd say, a medium slope to it. The very prominent eagle head, which is why it's thusly named, is on the face, as well as this unique lettering to the Schisler Eagle Heads that has this line that wraps downward and around the Eagle Head logo. It features the 45 pounds and 20.4 kilograms, and this is one of the three color variations. This is the blue. I've also owned the gray. I've never owned the black Eagle Heads, but they do look pretty sharp. The color on this particular pair of blue 45 pound eagle heads has held up quite well. There's just a little bit of wear to the rims and some to the back. And I have noticed some casting flaws on these. A pair of my 25s had an odd casting flaw and so did a pair of my 35 gray eagle heads. The edges to the plate are soft edges. They're not beveled, but they're certainly not sharp. So this feels okay in the hand. The center hub has that slight slope that I like. And then as far as how it fits on a barbell, on a Rogue Ohio Power Bar, there's quite a bit of slop, quite a bit of play on the bar. I would say this is moderate play on the bar, nothing to be concerned about, but also nothing to celebrate. It's also worth noting that their diameter is right in line with modern plates such as the Strength Co. Schisler Eagle Head was produced by Buckeye Barbell, which also had the brand Schisler. Buckeye Barbell was owned and operated by four brothers, the Schisler brothers, all of which were power lifters, and a couple of them were nationally renowned. They produced equipment and different weights and barbells throughout the 1980s and into the 90s before closing up shop in the 1990s. You can find Schisler Eagle Heads as well as the other Schisler deep dish weight plates. And one of the first deep dish weight plate sets, I think the first set I ever owned, were Schisler's. You can see the Schisler Centennial set that I reviewed and restored in this video. These were produced overseas, and that's a knock against them for a lot of vintage collectors that weren't made in the United States. It's a little bit ironic as well, since they feature something of a patriotic logo with the eagle head. I believe they were made in Taiwan. I've seen Schisler Taiwan stickers, but I'm not 100% sure. In any case, as I mentioned, there's some casting flaws. However, the biggest thing I think these have going against them isn't that they were made overseas, it's the lack of depth. Instead of being a two inch thick deep dish plate like York or Weeder or Jackson, Schisler Eagle Heads are about 1.6 inches thick. That's more in line with like a Canada International or a Pacific. The set as a whole is a medium range set in my opinion because it has 25s, 35s, and 45s with this deep dish design. The change plates, the 2.5, 5, and 10s are deep dish, but they don't have the logo or the lettering. That was a cost saving measure by several companies over the years. The Schisler change plates have the numbering at the six o'clock position or the bottom of the face. The barbell that comes with the set is basically a generic hex bolt and barbell, but it says Schisler on the inner collar, or if it's an Eagle Head barbell, it will have the Eagle Head logo along with the Schisler branding. The collars do stand out. Although they're made overseas, kind of generic spinlock collars, I love the different colors. And of course, this blue color is my favorite and I don't think I'm alone there. Other than the lettering and the Eagle Head logo, it's the color that really makes the Schisler Eagle Head stand out. Even on the standard black plates, the lettering and the lines and the logo being white really makes it pop. The gray is kind of like a metallic gray, similar to this blue being a metallic blue, which is quite nice as well. In terms of weight accuracy, this particular pair were overweight. 
The first one that I weighed was 46 pounds. The second one was a little less than 46 pounds. So I used my Vintage Gains magnetic calibration plates to bring it up to the weight of the first plate. I'd rather have two plates that weigh the same than have a mismatched pair. You can pick up your own magnetic calibration plates, your own Vintage Gains at microgains.com. So then what are these worth? Well, they're made overseas. They're fairly recent plates. The kilograms is a dead giveaway of that. But with that said, we're still talking 40 some years ago at this point in 2024. There's some casting flaws that slipped through and made it into production. And there's some downsides to the design, like the 1.6 inch depth and the play on the bar. On the upside though, these are one of a kind. There are no other weight plates out there that have a logo and a lettering scheme like this, that have this 1950s diner sort of feel to them, along with the distinct color schemes that are available with the blue, gray, and black. And that is the trump card. That is the little spice that makes these what they are, which is collectible. If it weren't for the color and for the logo and the lettering, these might be moderately collectible on my rating scale, but the color, the logo, and the lettering bump these up to collectible. I would say on the lower end of collectible, so beneath BF Co and Marcy, but definitely higher than plates like International Canada or Billard. If you have a chance to find these in the wild and clean them up, they tend to clean up quite nicely. So try some oxalic acid before you completely strip it to bare and repaint. I hope this video helps you in your vintage weight adventures and if you enjoyed it consider picking up a deep dish weight plate club shirt or using those links in the description to do your shopping on amazon or for some new gym equipment with code vintage drop a comment and let me know what you think of these shizzler eagle heads there's certainly some varying opinions on them i've given you mine now i'd like to hear yours thanks so much for watching this is rob at vintage weights pgh